the malevolent manuscript. A library's dark secret. This disturbing tale is based on real events that unfolded in a small, unsuspecting town. Some names and details have been altered to protect identities, but the essence of the story remains chillingly true. It was a chilly autumn evening when I first stepped into the quaint and ancient library of Ravensbrook. Nestled amidst towering oak trees, the building exuded an eerie charm that sent shivers down my spine. Little did I know that, within those dusty, forgotten shelves, lay a malevolent manuscript that would change my life forever. I had always been drawn to the mysterious and macabre, and the rumor of a cursed book hidden within the library's labyrinthine stacks was too enticing to resist. The librarian, a wizened woman named Miss Hawthorne, greeted me with a knowing smile as I inquired about the infamous tome, The Devil's Codex, she whispered her voice trembling slightly. It's said to possess dark powers beyond human comprehension. But, my dear, you must promise never to open it. Of course, I couldn't resist. After weeks of painstaking research, I discovered that the Codex had been donated to the library in the early 1900s by a reclusive scholar named Professor Ambrose Blackwood. It was said to be a compilation of forbidden knowledge and blasphemous rituals. One fateful night, as the moon hung low in the sky, I sneaked into the library, my heart pounding with anticipation. The ancient oak doors creaked open, and I was greeted by the dim glow of antique lamps that cast eerie shadows on the towering bookshelves. I located the codex in a remote corner of the library wrapped in chains and sealed with wax. My trembling hands carefully broke the seal, and I began to read the arcane words within. The book was filled with gruesome descriptions of rituals, incantations, and horrors beyond imagination. As the hours passed, I became consumed by the Codex's malevolent allure. I delved deeper into its secrets, unwittingly unleashing an ancient evil that had been imprisoned within its pages for centuries. The library itself seemed to come alive, the air thick with the whispers of unseen entities. Night after night, I continued my descent into madness, my mind unraveling as the Codex's sinister influence took hold. Strange occurrences plagued the library, books flew off shelves, Spectral figures roamed the aisles, and the temperature plummeted to bone-chilling lows. Miss Hawthorne, realizing the grave mistake I had made, tried to intervene. But it was too late. The Codex had ensnared me, its insidious power corrupting my soul. I had become a vessel for the ancient evil, and I could feel its malevolent presence growing stronger within me. Desperate to break free from the Codex's grip, I resolved to return it to its chains. With great effort, I managed to reseal the cursed book and restore it to its rightful place. But the cost of my actions was immeasurable. I had sacrificed my sanity, and the library bore the scars of my folly. To this day, the Ravensbrook Library stands as a testament to the darkness that can lurk within the pages of forbidden knowledge. Its haunted halls and cursed shelves serve as a warning to those who dare to delve too deeply into the unknown. As for me, I am forever haunted by the malevolent manuscript, forever bound to the horrors I unleashed that fateful night. The library's secrets, once uncovered, can never be forgotten, and the Codex's influence endures, waiting for the next unsuspecting soul to succumb to its wicked charms. The events recounted in this story are based on local legends and accounts from Ravensbrook, but the veracity of the claims remains a subject of debate. It serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of delving into the unknown and the consequences of unleashing dark forces beyond our comprehension. The Secret of the Quiet Librarian Hello, everyone. My name is Bard, 
and I'm here to tell you a disturbing, true, library horror story. It happened a few years ago, when I was working as a librarian at a small college library. I was working late one night, shelving books, when I heard a noise coming from the children's section. I went to investigate, and I saw a woman sitting in the corner, rocking back and forth. She was wearing a long white nightgown, and her hair was matted and unkempt. Her eyes were wild and staring, and she was muttering to herself. I asked her if she was okay, but she didn't respond. I tried to approach her, but she just backed away. I was starting to get scared, so I called security. When the security guards arrived, they tried to talk to the woman, but she wouldn't say anything. They eventually had to escort her out of the library. The next day, I was talking to one of the other librarians, and she told me that the woman had been coming to the library for weeks. She would always sit in the children's section, and she would sometimes talk to herself or cry. The librarians had tried to help her, but she wouldn't talk to them. I never saw the woman again after that night, but I'll never forget her. She was the most disturbing person I've ever met. I still wonder what happened to her, and I'm glad that I never had to encounter her again. That's my disturbing, true library horror story. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you're ever in a library, late at night, be sure to keep an eye out for the woman in the white nightgown. The Haunting Blackwood Library The following story recounts a series of disturbing events that transpired at the Blackwood Library, an old, historic institution nestled deep within the heart of a quaint, sleepy town. The events in this story are based on real accounts and eyewitness testimonies. It was the late autumn of 1978 when my fascination with the supernatural led me to Blackwood Library. I had always been drawn to the mysterious and the tales of eerie occurrences within the library's hallowed halls piqued my interest. Little did I know that my curiosity would lead me down a path filled with unexplainable horrors. Blackwood Library was a grand old building, its Victorian architecture casting long shadows in the waning afternoon light. I had heard whispers of strange noises, books flying off shelves, and shadowy figures stalking the reading rooms. Intrigued, I reached out to the local librarian, Mrs. Johnson, who agreed to share the library's dark secrets, the haunting of Blackwood Library. She began with a somber tone, it all began in 1923 when a renowned occultist named Victor Sinclair bequeathed his extensive collection of arcane texts to the library. Among them was the notorious Necronomicon, a book said to contain forbidden knowledge. As Mrs. Johnson recounted, Sinclair's obsession with the occult had consumed him, and he had devoted his life to studying and practicing dark rituals. When he died, his spirit was rumored to be trapped within the very pages of the Necronomicon. It was said that he sought to communicate with the living and the library became his haunting ground. Determined to uncover the truth, I embarked on a series of late night investigations. Armed with a tape recorder and a camera, I ventured into the library's dimly lit corridors. Strange occurrences soon became a nightly routine. Books shuffled, eerie whispers filled the air, and the temperature dropped inexplicably. One fateful night, as I combed through Sinclair's collection, I came across the Necronomicon itself. The book was ancient and foreboding, its pages filled with cryptic symbols and incantations. As I read aloud a passage, an otherworldly chill ran down my spine. It felt as though the room itself had come to life. In the darkness, I saw a shadowy figure, unmistakably Victor Sinclair, materialize before me. His hollow eyes bore into mine as he whispered in a spectral voice. You should not have come here. Panicked and trembling, I fled the library, leaving my equipment behind. I had seen enough. The next day, 
I returned with a local paranormal investigator, Mr. Anderson. Armed with his expertise and specialized equipment, we delved deeper into the library's mysteries. What we discovered sent shivers down our spines. Electronic voice phenomena captured on my recorder revealed sinister messages, and the photographs we took showed ghastly apparitions lurking in the corners. The Necronomicon had indeed become a vessel for Victor Sinclair's malevolent spirit. In the end, Mr. Anderson conducted a ritual to cleanse the library of the malevolent presence. It was a harrowing experience, and we could feel Sinclair's rage as he was banished from the mortal realm. The library, one plague by darkness, gradually returned to normal, but the scars of our investigation remained. Blackwood Library stood as a testament to the supernatural, a place where the boundary between the living and the dead had been breached. The Necronomicon was sealed away, a cursed relic never to be opened again. And the town could finally rest easy, knowing that the malevolent spirit of Victor Sinclair had been put to rest. <laughs>